2020 has been a year of grieving for so many people. Now a Bay Area author has published a book on dealing with loss. It's called The Grief Train. We're now joined by Miranda Freeman, author of The Grief Train. And Miranda, the sudden death of your husband is what spurred you to start a blog about your grief, which then led to the book. Can you take us through that journey of writing it? I'd be happy to. Actually, I had no idea I was writing a book. I just started writing a blog to write about my feelings and thoughts after my husband's death. And I did a lot of reading and studying about grief and uh, looking at what grief is. Of deeping, we need to deep, dig down deep into that, those feelings, to feel those feelings, to be able to come out. And there were so many books I read also that just helped me understand that. And I had started in a, a writing group and I was busy uh, with my other work and couldn't be reading what I usually was writing about with events. And so I started reading my blog posts and they said you had to turn it into a book. So that turned into a four year journey of even more exploration of grief and mourning and the what we don't have in today's society that we used to in the 1800s of being able to express and for people to know that we were grieving, that we don't have that anymore. So I really started putting all of that in there uh, to, and I find, found after about a year and a half of writing the blog that I shared it with other friends that experienced a loss and they found it to be very helpful and uplifting. So that was also encouragement that I needed to share this with others to help others with their uh, feelings of loss and grief. And during that four year journey, what are some things you did not expect to discover while you were writing the book? Well, I didn't discover, um, I didn't know I would discover about uh, the protocol of the 1800s. And there was an exhibit at the Costume Institute at the New York Metropolitan Museum called Death Becomes Her, A Century of Mourning Attire, 1815 to 1915. Women. Uh, were the ones expressing the grief for the families, and they uh, were required to wear black from two to four years. And then they could show what place they were in their mourning, whether they were wearing black or gray or lighter gray or mauve as they went from heavy mourning, middle mourning to light mourning. So people would know where they were in that process. And it was a lot of protocol that we don't have anymore today that uh, we need to sort of create for ourselves. One friend of mine wore black for two years after her husband died for her own ritual. So having rituals and then looking into creating altars to be able to have a place to focus our grief and mourning is also important. And it's been something that I found that most people were not aware of. It's kind of finding your own process. There are a number of books on grief. What would you say differentiates the grief train from those books? Well, uh, so many from uh, Year of Magical Thinking from Joan Didion to uh, Except for Mum and Pup, uh, Christopher Buckley to Ages for Hawk for, um, I'm spacing on the author's name, I love her book, all expressing uh, different aspects of the feelings of grief and uh, being overwhelmed. And also a book uh, that really explained what is grief, what is sadness and the distinctions by Carla McLaren that really helped me. I kept studying it and studying it for me to understand what I needed to do because you now when someone we love dies, they take off their earth suit and they are fine. They are actually great and we are left to adjust to the change. And that is the hard part. And as I say, that's the hurt part. And it takes time to adjust to that change and that time. And it takes years. It's not an overnight, you know, when people say, well, aren't you done with that already? It's like, no, no, we have to have compassion. It takes whatever time it takes. I'm glad you brought that up because life doesn't stop when we're mourning. You yourself had to still run your business and plan the memorials for your husband. Do you feel like we ever truly get over a big loss? Well, I think uh, in my own journey, I discovered that I had less tenderness about the loss 
Uh, but still, as I say, and the reason I called it the grief chain is that they, that grief can come wash over us at any time, and we don't even know that it, it's going to show up uh, for us. So we can be sitting at the uh, station, and the grief train will show up, and we have no idea that it was going to show up again, that some little thing could trigger it years later. So uh, I think it becomes, we can adjust to it more over time. It's adjusting to the change more than anything. And, you know, the bottom line is they never leave because they are uh, part of us. They're in our heart because love never leaves because love is all there is. I feel like this will hurt, will help a lot of people during this time, especially with this pandemic ongoing. Where can people get the book? Uh, they can get it um, at our local uh, bookstore book passage, but of course Amazon and um, other online places. And uh, I just encourage people. I found that it's been very helpful for others. And really, I wrote the book to help others more than anything else. I had no idea that it would be published during this time of a pandemic when there is so much loss. Uh, we've had fires. We've had uh, hurricanes and then this pandemic of so many that we have lost. I think we need a national day of mourning to acknowledge all of the grief that has been occurred, and including just not being able to connect with each other as we have in the past with this pandemic. So there's so much loss that we have had during this whole time that uh, we need help and uh, coming together even even funerals and memorials that are on Zoom still are a way for us to touch each other, to connect with each other uh, in this time. And I think it's going to go on for a while longer. So the more we can do to help ourselves and help each other to move through this time of grief is important. Yeah, so much loss, as you mentioned. But I'm glad you also mentioned that there's also love, too, on the other side. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. You're so welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.